guitarlessons365.com have one of my favorite Def Leppard songs for you guys today um, my favorite off this album uh, uh, off of Hysteria so we're gonna do uh, Gods of War uh, it's a great track um, just a lot of cool guitar riffs in this very unorthodox riffs um, uh, some really cool stuff here so we're gonna dive into it in depth all whole thing note for note uh, before I get into it please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already Ring the notification bell so you'll know when I release a new video. And very important, check out my Guitar Academy real quick. Uh, you'll see the link in the description. Uh, right now we're actually doing a seven-day free trial as well. So you can try it out at no risk. Um, so it's just my, my, my Guitar Academy has all my guitar courses covering everything from a just complete beginner to uh, more advanced courses in improvisation, ear training, technique, um, guitar tone you name it and you know we got it all there so please go check it out got a great community over there already and hopefully you'll come and join us all right so let's uh let's dive in we're in standard tuning here um and i'm going to start with this uh main riff so the the intro of the track there's just kind of it's really kind of over it's really just a d mixolydian kind of they're just and it's probably phil Collin on his little sustain pickup Kind of just kind of wandered around on that. So uh, if you, I'm not really focusing on that. There's just a bunch of layers, kind of effects and stuff, um, based around a D chord, D power chord, um, and then just kind of really D mixolydian, kind of improvised over it. If you're interested in that part, but I'm really going to start with the actual main song here, uh, and the guitar riff, this really killer guitar riff by Steve Clark that comes in at the uh, one minute and nine second marks. So it sounds like, it sounds like this. <laughs> It's just really, really cool. Very, it's like I said, very unorthodox, but it just sounds, as soon as you hear it, it's like, wow, that's really cool. So let's start here. We're going to um, start. So that's the fourth fret there on the A string, and then six on the G and six on the D. And then go over to seven on the B string, back to the six on the G and six on the D. So that's kind of like the way it starts each time. Just kind of those six notes. And what he's doing, so the first time, three times you hear it, that's what he's, that's the little arpeggio pattern that he's doing. And then he ends it with a different note each time. So the first time, after he plays this, um, so he, he he's, Slides into the ninth fret there on the D string. Let that ring a little bit, a, a little bit of a vibrato bar there, and then do the same arpeggio shape again. And just a different ending note there, and that's the second fret on the D. A little bit of vibrato there, bar two there. Then the same, a little arpeggio thing again. And then a different note we're going to end it with, the second fret on the G, the A note. So, so far we have this. And then the fourth time through, the arpeggio is a little different. So that's going to be four on the A string, four on the G, and then four on the D. 
and then six on the G, then six on the D, over to four on the G. So those six notes are a little bit different. It's always kind of using a little palm muting there to let the notes come out. And then we're going to end it with this note, the seventh fret there on the A string. So the whole riff. All right, and then we have this, I just call it the E riff. All right, so there's a little melodic line that's going on, on top, and underneath it, we just have this. So just kind of hit that open E string a couple times. Let it ring. Just repeat that. And that's what's going on underneath this little melodic figure, which looks like this. All right, so that's gonna be. Uh, so it's like you play five, then four on the B, hammer back on the five, pull back up to four, and pull off to the open string. And when you get to the open B, there's a slight little bar dip there, like just a little. So we have this. And then we have this again. Same little lick again. And then we have this, which is the fourth fret on the uh, B and the, uh, and the G together. The double stop. And then the fifth fret on the B, to keep that fourth fret on the G though. And then we play four, six on the G, and then six, seven on the D. So we have, we have this. And then we start with the same melody again. And then just the um, ending we have, we have this. Which does this. That same kind of double stop stuff that we did earlier. But instead of going we go, we go. We just play the four by itself. Instead of going four, six, we play four on the G and then slide into these two, these two notes, the uh, seventh fret on the D and the seventh fret on the G. You also hear this too, uh, but you hear these more a little the second time through. So I'm just gonna do the first time through like this. And then we start repeating all of that, except this very last chord that we slide into when we do the repeat, we slide into this, which is a seventh fret there on the G, eighth fret there on the B. So all together for the whole thing. All right, so that's the end of the those two riffs work together for that E section. And then we have verse number one. Verse one um, uses this really cool riff um, by itself. And then at the, when we get to verse two, we use that same riff along with that main riff that we started the song with it together. So this new riff though for verse one is being played all by itself looks like this.
All right, so that's just kind of chugging along on this C-sharp power chord here. It's at the fourth fret of the A-string power chord. And then we have this little arpeggio here. So that's going to start with the open E, and then that leads into... So that's second on the low E, four on the A, one on the G-string, and then back down to the four on the A. All right, then we're basically going to do the same thing, except we're not going to hit the open E. We're just going to take this little arpeggio shape that we started in the second fret here, and move it to five. So move it to A. So we have this now five uh, on the low E, seven on the A, and um, four on the G, and then back to seven on the A. So we have this. So we have this. All right, then back to that power chord. And then a different inning. So that's just kind of the open A power chord a couple times. To the B power chord at the second fret off the A string a couple times. And then when you get to the uh, low E string, open by itself a little bit. And then second fret a couple times by itself. So it's kind of the power chord on the A string, and then on the low E, it's just single note. So, all right, then we start that power chord again, second time through there. So that starts that same arpeggio with the open E. And then we have a different part of it here, which is sliding into the fifth fret there on the E. Then play the fourth fret of the G string. And then move that all up to that again, but two frets higher. All right, and then we're back to that power chord. And then we're gonna end the uh, verse, first verse, with just playing that fourth fret down the second fret, then the open A. So all together for verse number one. All right, then we get to the pre-chorus. To me, this song sounds like it has two pre-choruses that go back to back. They both sound like they could be pre-choruses. Um, so I'm gonna call it pre-chorus number one and pre-chorus number two. So this is pre-chorus number one. Um, uh, so this sounds like this. We have the low power chords that are happening over it like this. All right, so that's pretty simple there, that lower part. So it's just a power chord kind of grooving along with the first fret of the low E, and then the third. So we have a melodic uh, guitar part that goes over that. It sounds like this. All right, so uh, that's a really cool line there. So that goes over that F, G power chords that are going on underneath it. So this is... So that's third fret on the uh, D string, and then go five on the B, five on the G, and five on the D. So. And then play three on the D string, five on the G, back to the three. All right, now we're gonna take everything up two frets. So we move it up here to the fifth fret. It's kind of the same uh, pattern, but a little bit different notes. So we have the fifth fret there on the D, 
fifth on the G, a B string, sorry. Seven on the G. Down to the fifth on the D. And then, and then play that five on the D again, seven on the G, and five on the uh, D. So we have this. And then we just kind of repeat it. But the second time through, we don't, we just kind of pick across it. And then when we get back to the D string there, kind of just kind of play a quick little rhythm on those two power chords. So it sounds like this. And then just repeat everything exactly from there. All right, so that pre-chorus is a little bit longer. The, when they, the next time they play it, it's half as long. And then the play it again later as long, it's the same length. They just play it there. So uh, then we have what I call pre-chorus number two comes in. Uh, so we have two pre-choruses and no chorus. <laughs> so uh, for the first time through, um, they make you wait for it because it's a killer chorus. So, uh, so pre-chorus number two. All right, so that starts to the B power chord in the second row of the A string. Then move it up to D power chord at the fifth fret. And then a couple times on the open A power chord. And then move that to the E power chord at the seventh fret. So from there, instead of going to the A down here to the B, we want to get that slide in there. So we do the A power chord here at the fifth fret of the low E string. Hit that a few times, then go up to the seventh fret, and then hit that power chord and slide it down. And then, even though this is B power chord, we're going to basically slide down and then start playing this B power chord underneath it. So it's that like that, we have, that's how we get that slide on there. I was like, how are they doing this slide exactly? But I, I kind of watched a live video, and that's what they're doing. They kind of hit the B there, slide down, and then catch it again down here. So we have this. And then from there, back to that D. So, so. Kind of just like the beginning of this riff. Back to our E. Kind of hold that a little bit and it takes us to verse number two. All right, so verse number two contains two riffs working together that we've already covered. That main riff. Very, very cool, fun to play. And, and that works along with the... Uh, So those two riffs together, that, that main opening riff, and then that riff I just played that was verse number one now work together and create, uh, they work together really well, um, and that is verse two. So you need you know, definitely two guitar players to make that sound good. All right, so now after verse two, we go back through the two pre-choruses, um, and uh, we finally get to our first chorus after that. So after that second pre-chorus, play the same Now we, instead of holding on this E at this, this pre-chorus, we do this.
Now that's how uh, basically probably Steve Clark would play it. Even though I've seen things where once in a while he'd be like, kind of up there, but for the most part you see him playing it here. Kind of as an open chord, and Phil Collin plays it as power chord. All right, so let's do uh, C Clark's parts first. So that's the D power quarter. And then that G would be in the bass. So that's gonna be the second fret there on the uh, A string, open D, open G, and the third fret there on the B. And then what we're gonna do, just take it and move the note from the, on the, uh, up to the uh, third fret on the A string. Leave everything else the same if you want. And hit it that a couple times, and then just move this bass note over to the low E string third fret to make it a G chord. And, and when you do that, you want to mute the A string with the bottom of your uh, middle finger. So we have this D, After three times of doing that, we have this ending, which has this. So that's just three on the low E. Or this comes straight from the D chord to the D chord, then to three on the low E, and then two on the low E to the open E. Now, you can do Phil Collins play power chords with it, and we have this. That's the D power chord, and then so that's second fret there on the uh, A string with the fifth fret there on the D. Play that and then move that note up to the third fret there on the A. And then move it down to the G power chord of the third fret of the low E and start over. All right, uh, so from there we go back to the um, the E riff. All right, and then out of that E riff we get to the solo. So um, the, the, the rhythm underneath the solo is this first. All right, so it's pretty simple. It's just that power chord at the fourth fret there again on the A string. And it's gonna go open A power chord to the B power chord of the second fret. And then the same thing off the low E string. So those are really the five chords that he repeats, just a little bit different rhythm. You know, the beginning is kind of a little palsy. And, and then eventually he'll just get to where he's kind of chugging through them. And then the last time you hear it played, it's just kind of holds on that low E to take us back into the pre-chorus number one. All right, now for the solo. Now this solo, fair warning, it's there's a lot of things, there's a lot of overdubs going on here. Um, so what I've done is I've tried to make sense of those overdubs and put them together into uh, a solo that you could play with just one one guitar. Um, so it's not going to have all the little melodic lines in there because it's impossible to do because there's multiple things going on at once. Um, and this was not actually performed like this on the original recording. I'm combining little sections. Um, but I think it works kind of, you can combine it and I'm basically using the main melodic content at all times. Um, and I'm playing that. So I'm just kind of jumping around at different parts. All right, so it sounds like this.
All right, so obviously that's kind of all over the place, but it's, it's what I had to do to make it sound anywhere like the recording. So um, we're going to start with the same riff. And then that riff again, except now it's going to slide into the ninth fret there on the G, and then up to 11, and then up to 13. And then we go into an octave melody like this. So that starts at the um, now you, you might have done that just single note of uh, you know and then just layered the the lower octave in there. I'm just doing it together. So, so that's the uh, ninth fret there on the uh, D, twelfth on the B. Play those together, and then move it up two frets, so 11th fret, and then move up 13, 14, and then again, 13, 14, up to 16, and then back down to 11. That's the way it is. Now, real quick here, there's a quick little comes in there that's obviously some metal guitar but I like that little line so as soon as you get down here to that the 11 the second time just hit the the kind of a bending release of the, the 14th fret there on the B over to 13 on the uh, G string so they have this and then we have the ending with is this So that's a bend at the 17th fret there on the B. And then play 14 real quick on the G string. And then jump down to 11. And do a bend up from there. This so was a bend release. And then bend release. And then a little. Which is 14, 16, 17 on the. Uh, B string, and then a bend to the 19. All right, so that is a kind of a good piece together of the whole thing. So I'll play it all for you real quick. All right, so that takes us back to uh, pre-chorus, both pre-choruses, so <laughs> number one and two. Um, and, and then we had the last chorus, which is basically just the same chorus played twice, twice as long. Um, but so after you played through it twice, instead of having this in, you know, Let's say twice. You're not doing the. You just keep repeating that D. Yeah, kind of repeat that like seven times. So this is one of the first chords in it, but we're just gonna keep going. So after seven times, we have this ending. So that's kind of the same thing as this. But instead of the low E string, it's on the A string. Three, two. All right, so for this outro section, we basically have a couple of things going on here. We have one guitar that's just kind of keeping the low bass notes going. It's not like this. So that's just the open A string to the third fret on the A, and then we go two, one, zero on the low E. All right, now with that, we have this little arpeggio figure that sounds like this. I mean, 
Is there? <laughs> that is so cool, Sonic. Uh, I was just really. I mean, Depp Leopard, man. Those guys are just inc incredible. All right, so we're gonna start with around and based around an A minor chord. So open A string, two on the D, two on the G, open B, then first fret on the B, back to the open B. So. All right. That's the first chord. Then we have this. So that's the third fret on the A string. Second fret there on the G. Then you have the open B. Hammer on the first fret, and then hit the open E. So we have. Now from there we have this. That's the second fret on the low E, second fret on the G, third fret there on the uh, B string. Then play the first fret on the low E string and the open E. So as soon as you get that open E, let that ring, and then you're gonna play this over. So that's going to be, you kind of pick across. So for that open E, then the 5th fret on the A, 3rd fret on the D, 5th fret on the G, open B, open high E, and back to the B. Really cool chord. And then we start over. kind of do that to the fade out and oh, Ronald Reagan everything you hear everything on top of it so <laughs> there's a lot going on in that part uh, but anyway I hope you guys enjoyed this really in-depth breakdown of God's War it's just an amazing song just so well done and it's, it's a lot of fun to play it got some really unique riffs in it too so I hope you enjoyed it I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com